friends, good morning and welcome to worship on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. It is good to see you and we are glad you are here. This is the day that the Lord has made so we will rejoice and be glad in it. I would like to welcome back Alex B. today, uh, this morning. Uh, Alex is a wonderful pianist and he's also the choir director at uh, St. Mary Ann's Episcopal down the street. So we are grateful that Father John lent him over to us again this week and that he is here to uh, worship with us. It's hard to believe that it's already August, <laughs> but it's here. So you know what? We're going to have some August-themed jokes this morning. Maybe more to do with heat, but luckily it's not like 1,000 degrees outside. But So why do bananas use sunscreen? Because they peel. There you go. <clears throat> and what does a bee do when it gets hot? He takes off his yellow jacket. Right, Don? There we go. I got some good laughs today. Friends, I'm grateful you are here. May you always know that you are loved and enough in the Lord, that you just come as you are to worship and praise the God of love, the God of grace, and the God of hope, the God who calls us together here to worship. So friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds as we listen to the prelude. Friends, please stand as you're able. <clears throat> we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. By grace you have been saved. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now, friends, I invite you to open up your hymnals to hymn number 656, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray the prayer of the day together. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world and all its need with a life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear God's word. The reading is this morning is from Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. As Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight, <clears throat> at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails come up and covered the camp. In the morning, there was a layer of dew on the camp. When the, dew, the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance 
as fine as frost is the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read a selection from Psalm 78 responsibly. So the Lord commanded, so Lord commanded the clouds above and opened the <clears throat> doors of heaven. Raining down manna upon them to eat and, and giving, giving them, them grain from, from heaven. heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided them food enough. The Lord caused the east wind to blow in the heavens. Ground from the south wind, raining down flesh upon them like dust, and flying birds like the sand of the seas. Letting them fall in the midst of the camp, and round about the dwellings. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. The gospel, uh, if you could please stand. <coughs> The Gospel is from uh, John 6, verses 24 through 35. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the lo loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answers th answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what signs are you going to give us so that we may see it and believe you? What works are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God that which comes down from heaven gives to life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Friends, you may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God the Father through the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we would have had a normal church service last week instead of doing Christmas in July at the barn, we would have taken a detour from Mark's gospel and started a five-week study in the sixth chapter of John. Now I have to say I'm grateful I don't have to preach five weeks in a row on one chapter. I think four is plenty. But for us to get an understanding of what is going on, we need to review what we would have read last week. Last week, you would have heard the story of Jesus, who was able to offer a meal to 5,000 hungry people with just two loaves and five fish, with plenty of leftovers. Then you would have heard an interesting story about this Jesus guy walking on water in the middle of a crazy storm to proclaim a peace that surpasses all human understanding. And this morning we find ourselves with the crowd, with the crowd that has been miraculously fed by Jesus. They come to Jesus with questions asking, where have you been? And they have some full bellies with those questions. And they've already been filled with a great surprise. But the surprise Jesus has in store for him this morning is not one that they could imagine. Instead of a free breakfast or another piece of bread, Jesus offers something else. 
he begins to explain the significance of the events that happened the day before. And yes, the explanation is confusing, surprising, and probably catches the people a little off guard. But Jesus starts out right by calling out the crowd. He calls them out for their pettiness, that they come to him not because they believe in him or the signs that they've seen, but because they have been filled with bread, that their bellies are full. Jesus has already rebelled against the idea of being king since the crowd already wanted to conform him to what they wanted. What they thought they needed and what Jesus was offering was not matching. And it got me thinking that sometimes don't we do that? Jesus as vending machine. A5, Jesus, give me this. C7, I could really use this, Jesus. F3, some support would be really nice right now. D8, and this is for me. This house looks really nice. Can my offer please go through? B2, you don't really want me to do that, right? Or A1, 2, or 3. A Jesus who thinks like me, looks like me, believes what I believe, the votes the way I want to vote, the Jesus that is in the perfect image of me. Of course, it would be easy to believe in a God who, got, who gave us everything we wanted, the best house, the nicest car, the most money, the perfect family, the ideal body and health, and also a God that affirmed everything that we do. Why can't Jesus just conform to what I want? Faith would be so much easier, wouldn't it? David Lose writes, But God, you see, our God rarely does what God is supposed to do. For our God is a God of surprises, of upheavals, of reversals. And so rather than do what God is supposed to do, God does the unexpected. Instead of pronouncing judgment in the face of our sin and selfishness, God offers mercy. Instead of a penal justice, love. Instead of condemnation, forgiveness. Instead of coming in power, God came in weakness in the form of a baby boy. And instead of giving us a miracle, God gives us God's own self. This puzzling and surprising reality might be the same amount of comfort as it is completely terrifying. Because you begin to think, do I want to have a freedom that binds me to the needs of my neighbor? Do I want to confess a faith in a God who just says things? Show me, Jesus. And that's exactly what the crowd demands. What sign are you going to give us today so that we might see it and believe you and all the things that you're saying? What work are you performing? And this is God's surprise. Yes, manna in the wilderness after the Israelites complained was nice and showed how God shows up in the wilderness times. And yes, quail in the evening to feed hungry people was what their ancestors needed for that time. But Moses didn't do that. Jesus says, it is my father who will give you the true bread from heaven. In one sermon, my professor described how true bread is the manifesting power of love. He writes, true bread because the love for which moved me, which moved Jesus to give himself for you, was his father's love as well. True bread who gave Jesus the victory over death and grave. Jesus' spirit's love is the same love that Jesus sends to us, to you, to cast out fear and inspire the courage of faith motivated in love. 
Jesus is not some vague or slippery ghost that people can use and abuse as they please. But Jesus really is the one who gave his body and blood for you. For forever, Jesus will bear the scars by which you will recognize him. This is who Jesus is. This is the great I am. The bread of life. The true bread who wants to be with you, his people. And luckily for us, Jesus has already shown us where he wants to show up. In the stormy seas. In the wilderness, leading us to safety and calling us home. Because Jesus is offering for us something that truly lasts, something given to all people. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. True bread has a meal to prepare for all people. I am the bread of life, Jesus says. Not I am the bread of life if. See, there's no condition in that. There's a period. There's no transaction taking place. There's no Jesus as vending machine. Because Jesus doesn't want to put a condition on himself for you. It's free. Because it's love. But it is costly because it costs Jesus' life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. That's what Jesus has to offer for us, today and always. Instead of Jesus as vending machine, it's Jesus as the word made flesh. It's Jesus as a sip of wine and a tiny piece of bread. It's the hungry feast that two simple, ordinary things will fill us for a lifetime. Martin Luther would remind us the whole of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection are summed up both succinctly and eloquently in the two words we hear when coming to Christ's table. For you. This is Christ's body given for you. This is Christ's blood shed for you. So friends, on this day, come and receive the surprise of your lives. A surprise that is life-changing. A surprise that knows what love really is. For those who come to Christ will never be hungry. And those who believe in Christ will not thirst. And that is God's promise for us today. For you and me. And God keeps God's promises. Friends, you are loved. And you are enough. Amen. I invite you to stand now and turn in your hymnals to hymn number 618, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer.
Friends, let us confess the faith of the church with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. Rooted in Christ, sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Let us respond to each position, petition with your mercy is great. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests. Defend species at risk of extinction and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing. And accompany those who are imprisoned. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. We pray this day especially for Rosemary Cameron, Mark, Patty Ryan, Yvonne Lorenz, Drew, Virginia and Robert McKnight, Debbie Ross, Jeremy and family, Kaya and family, Sabrina, Danielle Lewandowski, Michelle Logan, Joe Logan, Beverly Cox, Andrea Dickey, Bill Matthews Sr., Tom Vicente, Joyce Owens, Emily Oles, Sue and Mark, Lynn McGee, Cody Morris, Jim and Diane Abel, Diane Gutowski, Elisa Webb, the family of Jack Little, and all those affected by gun violence and COVID-19. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You receive all who come seek, seeking the sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift those and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you always. Look around, share a sign of peace with your neighbors, see all who's here. As always, we have our plate there in the back um, to receive your offerings this day. And also grateful for those who give of themselves and their time for the work of the church. 
We are so very grateful, and we call you to continue to do it because we need you. But because God has loved you so very much, God has called you to this place to share that love with the community around us. Friends, let us pray. Almighty giver of all good gifts, grow in us the wisdom to know that all we have to give is in our hands only because you have given to us first. Remind us that you have called us in Christ to be gentle, patient, and loving, and at one with your children everywhere. May the gifts we have been given and the gifts we share reflect the debt of our gratitude for your many blessings. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as you are able. For those watching at home, if you would like communion, you can go on our website, neblc.com. You will find my contact information in many different places. Feel free to contact me, and I will gladly bring you the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, Endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at the end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of the bread of equity and drink from the cup of freedom, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Send so now we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints and light. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honors is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and daily teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, come, taste, see, and receive the true bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The banquet feast is prepared for you. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Please be seated.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A few announcements for us this morning. One is that uh, the funeral arrangements for Pastor Jack Little will be this Saturday at 1 p.m. at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Newark. So right there on 896, uh, his funeral arrangements will be there. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact me. Um, this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., we're going to still be meeting at the church. We're going to venture into the book of Malachi, so the way we're kind of uh, lamenting a little bit, but also celebrating the last month of summer. We're also going to be studying the last book of the Old Testament together. We have four Wednesdays in August, and there's four chapters in Malachi. So uh, bring your Bible if you have one. If you don't, we'll have extras. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a Bible study, but more about what does this book have to offer for us today to really uh, give us uh, bread, and nourishment for our journey together. Um, Aria has a potluck sign-up in the back, but I also have one out here for our 70th anniversary celebration, which will be on August 15th at what time? 3 p.m., that's right. So we're not doing a 1030 service, but we'll gather in the afternoon at 3 for, a, for worship, and then right after worship we'll have a potluck. The church is going to provide drinks, and we'll have pulled pork sandwiches. So we are just asking, we're bringing back the good old potluck after, what, like two years of probably not doing one? So um, I'm just going to pass this around. Uh, you can sign up on this one or the one in the back uh, on the sign-up sheet on the bulletin board, right, Aria? It's on the other side. So any, any other statements regarding the 70th anniversary that I missed? No? Perfect. If you have any questions, you can contact me, Sharon, or Aria. Um, church council has decided to call a special congregational meeting on August 29th uh, to call Bethel's next pastor. Um, so that meeting will take place after worship that day. Um, so you see in your bulletins that there is a, an event kind of is scheduled on September 11th for God's Work Our Hands weekend. Um, I'm just throwing that date out there that we will be doing something that day. More details are to come, but I just want you, if you have it open, to maybe come by for an hour or so that day for um, a service uh, project, block party, still trying to figure out logistics, but, um, but just keep that day open if you have it. Anything else for the good of the order? Well, I know it is August 1st, so we have to, I have to know August birthdays. So I know Rayanne has one in a couple days. It's the third, right? Yeah. Awesome. Any other August birthdays? Paul, what's your day? 26. 26, okay. Any other birthdays? All right. Well, we'll do a little acapella happy birthday. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rayanne and Paul. Happy birthday to you. Friends, please stand for the benediction. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of God's Holy Spirit. And the God of all grace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We will conclude today's worship with the singing of Son of God, Eternal Savior, ELW number 655, 655.
friends, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.